Hello everyone, welcome into my video on my top 10 men's fragrances for fall and winter 2019 slash 2020. It's a little overdue. I wanted to do this at the beginning of the fall season, but I definitely want to do it now because we're getting right up to, it's almost too late to buy Christmas gifts for this year. So in case you want to drop a little hint to somebody to pick you up a fragrance for Christmas, I want to get this video uh, done here. If you're new to my channel, I do mostly wet shaving videos, but fragrance is a big part of wet shaving, and it's one of the reasons that I got into wet shaving is from men's fragrances. So I wanted to roll this in because I know a lot of men in the men's fragrance community are interested in wet shaving and vice versa. I've been talking about this one for a bit, so here we go. I'm going to leave off the honorable mentions. I'm going to do that in a separate video and just jump right into my top 10 list. At number 10, The One by Dolce & Gabbana. Now this is classified as a woody, spicy fragrance. Uh, the notes that are listed are amber, tobacco, ginger, cardamom, grapefruit, orange blossom, cedar, coriander, and basil. And this is a run at about 44 bucks uh, for the 3.3 ounces at uh, discounters. Um, the opening on this is a vanilla sort of caramel and it's a little sharper on the opening and, and with a little slight green note, like a clean, fresh green note, but it dries down into a vanilla that to me has a little bit of a soapy overtone. Uh, but this is still um, more of a nighttime, definitely fall, winter uh, fragrance, date night fragrance. Uh, but yeah, number 10, the one for men by Dolce & Gabbana. Now, number nine. Number nine is Platinum from John Varvatos. Platinum from John Varvatos. So this is a classified as a leather fragrance. Uh, it has white sandalwood, amber, leather, incense, cinnamon, bitter orange, vetiver, sage, coriander, bergamot, and myrtle. In the opening, I get like a caramel, tobacco, leather, sweetness, and the dry down is much more subtle tobacco, leather, vanilla. Uh, this is actually discontinued. I, you can't find it on the discounters. I found it on, there's, it's on eBay for $40, but I bought this one about two years ago. Um, but yeah, it's a good casual, um, I would say, you know, fall, winter fragrance. A little more towards the nighttime. It doesn't last very long. When I sniffed this one for the first time, it made me think of the smell of a luxury hotel lobby. In fact, we had just returned, my family and I had just returned from a conference, and the lobby in that hotel smelled exactly like this. It's just a luxurious, a luxurious fragrance. At number eight is a fragrance very similar to that, and that's uh, Bentley for Men Intense. Now this is a very similar smell as I said. This is classified as an oriental spicy. Uh, the notes on this are rum, incense, woody notes, leather, benzoin, cinnamon, black pepper, patchouli, bay leaf, cedar, clary sage, geranium and bergamot. Now on the opening I get a luxury like warm leather tobacco marshmallow vibe. This is almost leans into the gourmand area. It's very luxurious. Um, in the dry down I get more of a roasted marshmallow. It gets a little sweet but it's really well done particularly for the $29 you can pick it up for. Again very similar to the John Varvotas Platinum and a little bit to the to the one by Dolce & Gabbana, um, but this would be the best of the three out of those. But it is a little gourmandish, but it it's definitely has a luxurious uh, smell. All right, 10, 9, 8, let's number 7, getting into Dior Sauvage. Now this one is my blind reach. Um, this one is classified as an aromatic fougere, although in the fragrance community it's much more known as like a blue, one of the blue fragrances. And of course this one, uh, the, the, the chief characteristic, the chief note is that umbroxan uh, note with the bergamot, black pepper, Sichuan pepper, lavender, pink pepper, cedar, vetiver, geranium, patchouli, labdanum, and elamine. You can pick this up for about 95 bucks, this 3.4 ounce. It's not really discounted at the discounters. You can pick it up basically at the same price at Macy's as you can a discounter. Uh, for me, on the opening, I obviously get the clean, clean and broxen, which is, I think, what I love and a lot of people love in this and why it's mass appealing. 
you get the pepper, you get the citrus. In the dry down, I get much more of an orange with that, ambro that ambroxan and continue getting the pepper and the citrus. It's a little sharper in the dry down, um, which is interesting. But um, this is a good blind reach. If I'm going out the door, I don't want to think about what I'm going to wear. It's a good office fragrance. It's a good year-round fragrance. I know many people are tired of seeing it, but uh, it's, it's one of the first uh, high-end fragrances, I'd say, that I fell in love with. Um, there's no real niche fragrances in here, although there's a couple that you might qualify as that. Uh, so, you know, obviously a designer fragrance. But the Sauvage, my dumb reach, really good at number seven. Now, number six, you might want to classify this as a niche fragrance. And I'm just not for sure because um, it's not a big house designer. It comes from the wet shaving community. And this is from a company called Holy Cow. Um, and it is called King of Oud. Now, for me, this is not so much an Oud fragrance. Although you can smell the oud in there, and therefore it makes it a good fall winter, but this is one that reminds me of my bar of the barber shop of my childhood. Okay, so a uh, reading from King of Oud's uh, from Holy Cow's website, King of Oud combines the freshness of bergamot and scents of rose and pink pepper, sitting on a bed of oud, patchouli, and vetiver for a fragrance that is both fresh and richly aromatic. Uh, it has notes of bergamot, lemon, clary sage, rose, aldehydes, which is that barbershop smell it, like the to me i would think that that would be like the barbicide the blue liquid in the barbershops the aldehydes pink pepper angelica rosewood galbanum agarwood or slash oud sandalwood vetiver patchouli and amber and this runs about 47 dollars for this uh, 60 milliliter uh, size for me on the opening i get a whiskey oud barbershop pipe feel and the dry down just is pure old school barbershop for me, at least the barbershop that I uh, used when I was a kid. I just love this so much. And so for it to not be designer or from a traditional, you know, niche uh, fragrance house, uh, Holy Cow's King of Oud is amazing for a fall winter scent uh, and comes in at number six for me. Now, number five, also from a wet shaving house, if you will. And this is from Sterling Soap Company uh, out of Arkansas. This is Sterling Barbershop. So two sort of barbershop scents back to back. Normally we think barbershop would be spring, summer, more of a fougere type fragrance. Um, this is not a um, fougere, in my opinion. Uh, TryThatSoap.com, which is a, a website that tracks sort of scent notes within the wet shaving community, primarily among uh, shaving soaps. Uh, you know, says the notes on this are vanilla, oak moss, musk, amber, rum, and bay. So yeah, the oak moss and musk, possibly the amber, gives you a little bit of a traditional fougere or barbershop sense, but the vanilla and, and, and like the rum and the bay give it a little bit. The rum and bay is a little bit towards the fougere side, but definitely the vanilla is a little different. Uh, and I get more on the opening, I get more, sort of a warm, powdery, chocolate, vanilla, extract so it's not just pure vanilla but like a boozy vanilla with a little citrus and then the dry down for me reminds me of freshly baked muffins like that that's sort of that booziness coming off of the like that bready smell uh, but with a little sweetness as powdery this is uh, in the wet shaving products that i own this is the one my wife loves the most this scent and that's why i bought the edt now this edt is a still 21.95 for a 50 milliliter there's many others from Sterling I like. This is my favorite, the one my wife likes a lot. Uh, my daughter also says she, she enjoys the scent of it. Sterling Barbershop from Sterling Soap Company. All right, number four. Now, number four is one I like quite a bit. This, this could be up in my top three, but you know I had to make decisions. It's, it's out at number four, down at number four. This is Terre d'Hermes, and this is a, the EDT. And uh, this is classified as a woody spicy, and it has notes of orange, vetiver, pepper, grapefruit, cedar, patchouli, benzoin, and pelagornium. Not sure what that is. Um, now, this is classically known as a dirty orange scent within the fragrance community. This is a great, I love this so much. It's The, the opening has a luxury vibe, that dirty orange, a little bit of sharpness, a slight green like bitter overnote, but then it dries down into that just orange vetiver uh, pepper scent. And you can get a one ounce bottle right now from discounters for about 30 bucks. 
I really like this. This is luxurious. It's good for uh, us mature men, you know, middle-aged uh, guys. It's, it's just a great, I love this uh, scent quite a bit. But this is my number four fragrance, Terre d'Hermes. And uh, it's, it's one that, you know, I can reach for it as sort of a dumb reach too, just like with the Sauvage. This one you can actually wear in daytime, I think, uh, and get away with it. Uh, the barber shop I just mentioned you could get daytime as well, um, but also with this and even the King of Oud. Um, and, and, and so the Sauvage, King of Oud, barber shop, this Terre d'Hermes, I think you could all do in daytime. The Bentley Intense, the Platinum, the One, I think would all be more nighttime scents. Speaking of nighttime scents, and one or two that could also do night or day, we're getting into my top three, and this was really, really hard for me to, to decide where these top three sort of, you know, which one's one, which one's two, which one's three. This is the full, the first full bottle of fragrance that I ever purchased. When I first got interested in fragrances, I bought a bunch of samples before I bought any full bottles, and the first one I fell in love with was this one, which is definitely a, a, more of a nighttime scent or, you know, a, a cool weather daytime scent you might get away with. I rarely wear it to work. If I do, I put it on very lightly. And that is John Varvatos's Dark Rebel. I fell in love with the scent the minute I smelled it. This is an Oriental Woody. Um, you know, I'll just tell you what I get first and I'll give you the official notes. So on the opening, I get a woody incense, a little smokiness with a slight touch of like moss, like mossiness. Uh, and it dries down into a, just a woody incense. I actually sprayed some of this on before I started the video. I just love this so much. This I, I would wear this all the time, if, but it's not mass appealing, and I think some people might be a little bit more put off by it. It's just definitely something that would be more suited for nighttime, um, certainly fall, winter, but I just love it. And if I could only keep three out of my uh, whole collection, this might make that three. I'm thinking about spring, summer too, but definitely, obviously, fall, winter, this is going to be in the top three for me. It could have been two, it could have been one, but I had to decide where it goes. But because it's not as versatile, it's more uh, nighttime, uh, then you, you, this is why it made it at three and not the, the next two that you're going to hear about. But I love this, this, you know, just snip it again. This incense, woodiness, I, I just love it. I just love the warmness of this scent. It's amazing. Number three, John Varvatos' Dark Rebel. Now, there's a Dark Rebel Rider, which is a little different than this. Uh, this is my favorite, the uh, Dark Rebel from John Varvatos. And you can pick this up for about 36 bucks at discounters. Uh, and I just love it, love it, love it. All right, number two. Now, this one is also obviously fall, winter. Definitely could wear it at night. But I also find I can pull this off in um, an office setting. And um, I actually swapped this, looking at my slides here, I swapped this right before I'd started the video because I did have it at number one. I put it back to number two, and that's where it's going to set. And it's, it's classified as an Oriental Vanilla, and this is uh, the Pure Havan from Thierry Mugler and uh, from the Amen uh, Men's uh, series, and I love this quite a bit. I have the Crypto Mint in this uh, same uh, Amen DNA. But uh, the notes on this are honey, tobacco, uh, vanilla, cocoa, patchouli, amber, uh, styrax, and labdanum. For me, on the opening, I get that honey tobacco, which is beautiful. It's got a very subtle sort of green, fresh overnote that or overtone uh, that you get a little bit there, but then it dries down into just a dark, honeyed tobacco. It borders on the gourmand, but not so much as the um, one, the platinum, the the Bentley, uh, men uh, Bentley for men intense. Uh, this is stays just sort of this side of being away from a gourmand. It does have that patchouli DNA, but it's not a traditional patchouli you may think of. So if you if you if you don't like patchouli, don't dismiss this one. I think you will will like it quite a bit. Um, I'm sorry, I just got to spray some on this on this hand. Uh, that opening is boozy. That honey tobacco. This is just beautiful. And I wear this frequently to the office. And I wouldn't wear it during spring or summer, but fall, winter, I wear this to the office. Um, and obviously, so it's a bit more versatile than the Dark uh, Rebel by John Varvatos. So this is the Pure Havan 
by Thierry Mugler. I find it has a good longevity. I like it um, quite a bit. I, I just can't get enough of this one. Um, this is one I will definitely repurchase. I've repurchased um, basically from the King of Oud Barbershop, Terre d'Hermes, Dark Rebel, I'd repurchase all those. Savage, I may not. Uh, the Bentley from In Intense may not. John Varvato's Platinum, hard to get. The one from Dolce & Gabbana, probably not. But definitely from the King of Oud Barbershop, uh, Terre d'Hermes, Dark Rebel by John Varvatos, and the Pure Havan from Thierry Mugler. It's my understanding they've changed the formulation of this a little bit, and there's better videos out there to explain it, but I hope I can get another bottle that smells like this one because this is amazing. And this is about $79. You can pick it up from Amazon or from the uh, discounters. So let's get into number one, which was number two, but I moved it up to number one. I love this one so much, obviously, because it's my number one. This is a Woody Aromatic, and you can get it for 33 bucks. And it's kind of part of a trio. There was the original version of this. And then a sport version. I like the original, and, and you it's a little easier to pull off at the office, and you could even pull it off, I think, during summer and spring. Uh, the sport I don't like as much because it drifts over into a little bit more unisex. Well, what am I talking about? I'm talking about Ancre Noir, and this specifically is the a la extreme version. This is a woody aromatic. It has notes of vetiver, incense, cypress, elemi, resin, uh, benzoin, sandalwood, patchouli, orris, and bergamot. Now the opening on this, I get a luxury like sandalwood vibe with a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of incense. The dry down is a woody, slightly smoky, sort of a burned wood, like when you smell wood burning. And not so much a campfire, but like when someone is doing a wood burning as like an art form, like engraving stuff, or if you just smell wood that's been burned from like the, the saw cutting into wood, it's got that sort of wood burn a smell. And I get pencil shavings from this, like pencil shavings when you're sharpening a pencil, obviously. That's actually a pleasant smell to me, so that's a good thing for me. But this is a, an amazing fragrance, particularly for 33 bucks. It smells like a niche quality fragrance. It doesn't uh, smell run of the mill. It's very, very unique. I love it. Um, I will repurchase this in a heartbeat. Um, so yeah, Ancre Noir a la Extreme from Alik. You know, as I said, my top three, the D Dark Rebel from Varvados, the Pure Havan from Thierry Mugler, uh, the, the, those are th three I absolutely love and will always have in my collection. But the Ancre Noir a la Extreme and the Pure Havan are much easier to wear at the office than, say, the Dark Rebel is. Um, so yeah, that's my top ten fall and winter fragrances for 2019 slash 2020 since winter will go over into 2020. Uh, as I said before, I, you know, I may or may not repurchase the one or uh, this is discontinued, the Platinum uh, or the Bentley for Men Intense, although I love all three of them. Uh, but I like to sort of focus my fragrance purchases, right? And those are good and I really like them. Um, the, Survi the Sauvage is great, dumb reach year round. Uh, but I'll probably grow tired of it eventually and just won't repurchase. Um, but I will definitely repurchase the King of Oud from Holy Cow, uh, Holy Cow rather, and the um, Barbershop from Sterling and the Terre d'Hermes. Uh, I, I love these and would definitely repurchase those. And then my top three, just one more time, just because they're amazing and deserve to be mentioned again, the Dark Rebel from John Varvatos, the Pure Havan from Thierry Mugler, and the Ancre Noir a la Extreme uh, from Lalique. These, these are amazing fragrances. So I hope that um, was useful to you for you to check those out. Uh, I do recommend you get samples and don't do blind buys, but that's just a little uh, bit of insight into what I like. And just so you know, my tastes tend to be towards those darker scents. So I tend to like the fall winter scents a little bit better. I love the smell of like smoky, leather, boozy, uh, tobacco, a woodsy type sense. I'm not a big, um, you know, uh, aquatic. I do like uh, some of the aromatic fougeres. Uh, not a big fan of the aquatic uh, sense as much. Uh, but yeah, those are my top 10. Hope you found this helpful. Please leave a comment telling me what some of your top winter and fall fragrances are. I'd love to hear from you. I want to do another video that is honorable mentions, 
But it's important to note that all those scents will be coming out of the wet shaving world. It's things that are from wet shaving that I think should find more of a foothold within the fragrance community. So I'll be doing that soon. But I thought I'd get these out there, particularly because I wanted to get that out there in time for the Christmas buying season, Christmas gift buying season, so that you might could drop a hint or you know, know what to buy for someone uh, going into Christmas. So enough of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.